problem. Well, now, we have with us at this moment a former Republican presidential candidate who's also served as an advisor to Donald Trump, Dr. Ben Carson, former member of the Board of Regents of, C of Regent University. And Dr. Carson, what a joy to see you again. God bless you. Thanks for being with us. Always, always good to see you, sir. Hey, listen, along the way, you, you surprised everybody. You, you came out early for Trump. What did you see in him? Right off the bat, you're pretty perceptive. Well, you know, I saw in him a good heart. You may remember during the, uh, the debates, in one of the debates, I couldn't hear my name being announced because the speaker system in the back was bad and there was too much cheering going on upside. So I stood there and waited. And uh, everybody else gleefully passed me up. But Trump came and stood next to me until the situation was resolved. That's the kind of person he is. And he was the only one who complained that they weren't asking me questions. You know, they, they were only asking questions where they thought they could get a fight and uh, really weren't very interested in policy. Uh, so, you know, I, I began to see what kind of person he was. I also live in the same area where Mar-a-Lago is. Mm -hmm. So I've been there. I've spoken to a lot of the employees. They love the man. Yeah, the, the people who park the cars, <laughs> the people mm -hmm. who clean the grounds, they love the man. That tells you a lot about a person. Well, you were, could have had your choice, I suppose, a certain cabinet post, HHS. You, you didn't want to get involved in all that bureaucracy. Why not? Well, you know, I only ran for president because there were so many people clamoring for me to do it. I had hundreds of thousands of petitions. I could barely get in my office. There were so many boxes of petitions. And, uh, you know, I prayed. I said, Lord, if you really want me to do this, you have to open the doors because the, all the pundits say it's impossible for someone like you to do, to make any kind of a run. And yet he did open the doors. You know, the money came in. We put together an organization. We had to change it. but. You know, it was, we were capable of moving very, very well. At one point, even led all 17 candidates. So, you know, it is possible. Uh, but, you know, right now I'm in a position where I can, you know, exert influence and, uh, you know, help with the direction of our country. M my goal was never to have a big title or big position. The real goal was to save our country. And I spent my entire career trying to save children's lives. And then to put them back in an environment that's not conducive to their well-being doesn't make any sense. So that's really what I want to do, is, is help to make America into the right kind of environment so that people can achieve their God-given potential. You know, the Surgeon General is a spokesperson for health. He talks about cigarette smoking, and he can tell people what the kind of diet they eat. And the Surgeon General has enormous moral sway. Would you consider something? That's not like, like running a cabinet position. Would you consider that? Um, I don't want to work within the government. I've made that pretty clear. Uh, they're still working on me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I think that right now our country is in a situation where it's very important to have, you know, voices out there talking about what is important, helping to heal the country. We have so many people who are, who are enemies now, who are getting in their respective corners and demonizing each other. We should be on the same page, pushing toward the same goals and not allowing ourselves to be manipulated into enemies. And, uh, you know, the, we have a very dishonest media. We need voices to point out the dishonesty in the media and help potentially to get the media to understand what their function is and the reason that they're the only business that's protected by the United States Constitution. The responsibility that they have to be honest and to inform the people in an honest way so that the will of the people can direct the country. Well, let me ask you this. Um, the media is, has been so hard on Trump. I mean, he's just been scathing in what they did, and yet he won anyhow. Now they're scathing about some of his points. Let's take Steve Bannon, for example. They were really going after him. Do you have, have you had a chance to know him? Do you have any uh, advice about him? Uh, I, I don't know him well, but uh, it's, it's almost to the point where anything that the media is against is probably good. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, <laughs> I'm, sorry that it, I'm sorry that we've gotten to that point. Uh, but the good thing is that the American people during this recent election did exactly what Thomas Jefferson said they would do. 
he said that we, when we reached a point where we were about to lose everything that's been fought for and lose our freedoms, the people of America would recognize it and they would rise up and they would regain control of the government. That has happened. Now we have to make sure in this reset that we do the right things, that we have a nation that is, is, provides equal justice for everybody. You know, when you talk about health care, for instance, uh, everybody would agree that we should do everything we can to provide health care for everybody, including the indigent. But it doesn't make sense to do that and then to raise the premium so high that the middle class now essentially doesn't have health care. What we have to do is look for things that work for everybody. That's what we mean when we say liberty and justice for all. Speaking of health care, uh, uh, it's clear that uh, top on the agenda is a repeal of what's called Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act. Uh, do, do you see that happening? Are, are you in favor of repealing that or replacing it? Well, what's the, what is your position on it? it yeah, I, I'm in favor of, of providing a system that you don't have to force people into and cajole people into, and something that is centered on the people and the health care providers. Uh, health uh, savings accounts are a perfect example. 80% of your encounters with medicine could easily be handled through a health savings account. And then the cost of your catastrophic insurance is going to drop dramatically because the only thing coming out of that are catastrophic events. Now, how often do they occur? Not very often at all. So we have many models uh, where this has worked in this country and in other countries like Singapore. Uh, it can be done. And when we take health care and we make it into a political football, then we get into all of these kinds of issues that we're having now. Well, Dr. Carson, we, we really appreciate you. You're so highly awarded. Uh, are you going to practice medicine anymore? Your skills were so incredible in terms of the, those conjoined twins that you separated. Uh, any more thoughts of getting back into the operating room? Uh, I'm going to continue to practice healing and try to heal our country. Absolutely. <laughs> that will be moral healing as opposed to physical. Well, please come back again. It's great to see you again. God bless you. Always a pleasure.